the Northern Knights. Just finished this book. Um, I've read it before. Um, I when I've started doing, well, trying to read this series, I finished the first one, read a chapter into the second one, and then gave up. And I've been told to continue with it um, by quite a few people. And I've, yeah, so I'm now I've finished this one. I've already started the second one before I even start this review because I just wanted to make sure I got to that point that I'd given up at. And I really like, I really like it. Okay, so if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. But the main thing is the way I review books. Um, what I'll normally do is give a general overview of the whole like thing, how I liked it, and that kind of stuff. And then I'll take five chapters, I'll break them down, um, and kind of give you uh, what's what and what I like about it. Mostly I'll talk about the narrative because that's kind of what grips me in a story as well as pacing and a few dialogue, dialogue stuff. Um, and yeah, and then I'll give a final conclusion and I will give it a rating out of a hundred. I usually use a five star review, but then I realized that quite a lot of books fall into a four star category. So I thought I'd like to spice up a little bit and give it out of a hundred because that way I can change and differentiate the different bits and pieces. Okay, so my general overview. This book does a great job of introducing more adult themes while still sticking with a child's perspective. One of the reasons that this book is great is that the child who is the main protagonist, Lyra, is not talked down on by other people. There's, there's Some of the adults do this, but these are seen as like the kind of evil kind of characters, the more despicable ones. Um, but most, most people don't talk down to her as a child, but treat her as an equal. Most of this comes through the fact that they're aware of her abilities to use the alethiometer, um, which is the compass-like instrument that uses to tell the truth. I think I think they mentioned it was aleth, or it was like ometer was m like met to measure, and aleth or something is like truth or something. So truth, yeah, makes sense. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, yeah. So she's not talked down on by the other characters which is one of the things I really like about this book. It doesn't treat, it's not like she's a child, she knows less. She's not as respected. Um, Cause she kind of proves herself throughout the novel to be a trustworthy character and many a capable character as well. Most of the information obviously isn't told to her because the way the world building is done, it's all done through what I like. I, I don't know how you, we would just, talk about it but I call it like assumed knowledge because if you come up with a character that's existed in this world prior to the books they're not going to need things explained to them like oh this is how this works this is how this works it's different in my past reviews of like say Harry Potter because he comes into a world not knowing anything because everything is explained to him and that's a second hand kind of way for the reader to then experience and learn about the world Whereas this one, it's all assumed knowledge. Um, and so everything is kind of, so for example, literally in the first, um, like the first page, it's all Lyra and her demon ran down this hallway. And you just, you, you question what a demon is, but as it goes, it kind of fills it in. It, and it's not just like straight up giving it to you, which I really like. Um, I like that kind of uh, learning curve. I think they talk about it in, I think, especially in like fantasy, they talk about this learning curve of how you, grow to understand the world that you're now reading about um, and I, I really like that. <clears throat> Some things aren't just spoken, uh, aren't just like assumed, for example dust, because dust is one of the main narrative issues um, and part of that being part, part of that narrative means that dust has to be explained as you go. I won't go into any more detail on that. Uh, the pacing of the book is very well done. Um, it's quite quick, um, similar to that of Harry Potter. It is qu yeah, it is quite quick, um, and not it's not too like I don't want to say like dragged out. And some of the more intense scenes are very fast, which I'm 
I'm not too sure about. So I I do want some scenes to be a little bit more spread out because it gives us time to um because these exciting moments I'd like to be able to live live in that moment and can like read more about those parts rather than it being really really quick to get to the conclusion or the big twist and I'd like to spend some time in that moment rather than using that moment to get to an answer or something like that. Most of the characters in this are great. Um, the adults are seen mostly as okay into if they're if they're Egyptians and people like that, but the um, older other characters are seen as untrustworthy, I think is a great word to use for that. And they don't seem to share a lot with the Lyra. Um, but that's because of those few characters other than that most characters kind of treat Lyra as an equal um, and it's their react their relationship with her is very well written so if we take the first chapter uh, the decanter of Toke I think I don't know if that's the first chapter it might be the second I'm, I'm not too sure but we'll take that chapter and this one introduces the character of Lyra and this from the get-go does a great job of um, going against gender stereotypes, which I don't want to rant on about because um, I just feel like it should be something that should exist in most novels now. Um, but Lyra is a very um, I, what hot-headed. I, I don't know. I don't know what the word is. It's kind of like she's mischief, mischievous, and it, they just use some examples in this beginning of the book to show. Her kind of nature as I don't want to say like an animal I know you had um, but she's just I, I, I don't know what the word for it but she's um, a very very good character um, <clears throat> I'd say one of determined is a main aspect of that which I really like um, the tone of the like the book as well not just this one but subsequent ones um, is set in the beginning of this. Uh, the world building is great in terms of, like I said earlier, this assumed knowledge. So it talks about Oxford College, scholars, demons, um, and like research to the north and the aurora and things like this that are just said to like bits and pieces that are just mentioned that aren't um, properly, they, they haven't given like a deep explanation explanation about every single thing on there mostly due to the fact that the character of Lyra as I said exists prior to the novel which obviously she would have so most characters do but I feel this one does a great job of um, setting that up as oh she knows this stuff already so there's no need to explain it to her the reader can pick it up along the way rather than have it explained in like drip fed and like monologues and as I mentioned before dust is one of these topics that's not known to Lyra so this is one that is explored as the narrative progresses as it's kind of key to the plot okay we're going to skip a big chunk because most of it is world building and i'm bringing in some characters that will pay off later um but i'm going to skip to the chapter called the lost boy uh, i feel this one's kind of important because it looks into the connection between a character a character and their demon and what their demon kind of represents this is the first instance of where a, you see a child separated from their demon and they're kind of like soulless um, and it's actually the first chapter where a child actually ends up dying. It leans into that more darker tone that's being set up um, and those darker themes that, I, that this author is willing to go to even though the main protagonist is a child and it doesn't seem like it's out of place because some some I know some books can um, start off with a child perspective, comedic, and then bring in some darker tones, and it just feels off. It just feels very like separated and disjunct from the whole thing. But this one does it quite well, <clears throat> and it kind of hits the character of Lyra very hard. Um, and yeah, I felt this chapter was very like not not really sad but it's sad in terms of see Lyra's reaction to this and um, if we skip a little bit we're gonna go over to the chapter called the silver guillotine um, this um, 
device in question um, shows how uh, Mrs. Coulter, Ms. Coulter, she's created this machine that separates the demon from the child. And you find out that Ms. Coulter is the one doing these and she even then comes to see this device that in action who then ends up nearly uh, killing Lyra and she takes her away realizing that it's her it delves into that darker themes that was in the previous chapter we were talking about was the whole like loss of a soul and what the demon kind of represents and it also shows the untrustworthy nature of those adults that are involved in um, like any any adult that's involved in dust is um, sinful and untrustworthy, which is explained later in terms of like the the, bi the Bible references, which are coming through this. It's more of the um, the book itself kind of I can't ignore the fact that it deep within it is a it does question uh, religion and institution and it's just. Um, that is obviously present, but I kind of take it as the fantasy um, as much as I can because I don't want to get into too controversial, controversial topics here. <clears throat> um, but yeah, like I said, it shows that untrustworthy nature of adults in this whole kind of experiment with dust. Okay, the next chapter we're going to look at, I am not going to be able to say. It's I Outrance. Uh, I don't know that I, I could probably say it better if I looked it up ah uh, but I'd take it me ages so I'm gonna just say it like that <laughs> but this is the chapter where um Yorick Bernison arrives and challenges Yofa Rackinson I think that's how you pronounce it um to a fight um the fight scene is very well written I really enjoyed it um, and one of my major things I liked about it, because I didn't want, I didn't want, there was a certain thing that I didn't want to happen, and that was to, for Lyra to interfere in this fight. Because that would undermine the character of, um, Europe. Um, and so the fact that she, the alethiometer itself tells it to trust him. And so she's there, she doesn't interfere, she sees that he might be losing, but is trusting in him to then win which he obviously does um but i've just felt that the fact that she didn't interfere kind of um builds upon yorick's abilities as well as just like making him seem a tougher character and living up to that kind of protector mantle he's been given throughout the book the next chapter and final we're gonna one we're gonna look at is the bridge to the stars this is the last chapter but i'm gonna talk about it a little bit at the end um, it all kind of merges together and this chapter shows the death of a friendly character Roger um, and also he kind of signifies the main protagonist Lyra's goal throughout the book it was to save Roger as well as the other children but Roger was the main plot point and the fact that she unknowingly betrays him by bringing him to her father I thought that was very well very well done um, within those final few chapters before it was kind of questioning whether it was the alethiometer but she was just like of course it is what else is there not realizing what was going on um, but the fact that the her goal of saving Roger which was what the book was about um, obviously save Lord Azriel as well but Lord Azriel was fine um, but to save um, Roger was the main kind of thing and the fact that she's then unsuccessful in that because Roger ends up dying and Azriel creates the bridge through to the other world um, and it just <sighs> the fact that that happens means that there is nothing really tying her back to the world that she's in at that point because obviously her parents are like not very good characters not very good people and the only person she's really got is Lee Scoresby who's kind of like he was there he, he's he got a decent relationship with her but he obviously is far away 
and um, you've got Yorick, who is obviously her protector, but in terms of true like friendship, there's no one really left. So the kind of decision at the end there to go through to the other world and find the source of dust and protect it, due to her experiences with her parents, um, is kind of more justified because of that. Okay, so my final analysis. Analysis. Okay, so my final analysis. This book is a great intro to the series, and it manages to cover many different themes in a very successful way, without like losing its kind of um, without I don't know without losing kind of not tension but its its general feel. It doesn't it doesn't feel disjointed at different any part. It, it very well done it's consistent I think is the word I'm trying to look for there <clears throat> uh, the characters are very well written I really like Lyra and Yorick they're very I really like them um, some of the Egyptians are very nice um, just just the way they're written they people seem genuine in this like I obviously not the adults that are concerned with dust obviously like I said earlier most of them are considered sinful and that's explained through like the bible stuff but um <clears throat> most of the other characters seem genuine and their motives and kind of desires are very clear and uh, and just understandable um <clears throat> i like the fact how the world building itself is done through that kind of what i said was assumed knowledge um the learning curve for this is quite it's not ridiculously steep. It this is a child's I'd say I don't want to say like a child's version, it makes it sound basic, but a child's version of a steeper learning curve than most other books like of that kind of genre. Um the fact that dust obviously is then not explained is part of the narrative and that's I, I really like that and I like how that's done. The final twist carried out extremely well. However, I do find some of just some scenes uh, in between such as maybe the fight could have gone on for a little bit longer and also the final scenes leading up to the bridge um, could have gone on for a bit longer like I said before I like more time being in the moment rather than it trying to rush through a moment to get to this conclusion that's been built up I feel like that's a bit of an issue in some places um, so out of that I'm gonna give this one a score of 82 out of 100 um, by the way, I stream over on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday and Friday from 12 till 4. Um, if you'd like to speak to any, like to me or any others about the books or just anything in general, we've got the Discord down below and I'll also leave a link to buy the book if you would like to. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.